Hi guys, thanks for tuning in. I'm Mike McIntyre and you're watching Away 4K. Today I'm here with a Benelli TRK502 motorcycle. Now this is the X model. It's the slightly more off-road version of the two Benelli TRKs. There is a road version that's got the mag wheels, this one's got the wire wheels. And I think it's got a bigger front and rear wheel, definitely a bigger front wheel. Don't quote me on the back. I'll look it up in the specifications and let you know later. So I've had this bike for a while, probably about uh, nearly a year now, and I thought it was about time to do a ride impression on it and let you guys out there know what I think of it. So today guys, we're just going to have a quick chat now about the bike and a few of its specifications. Then we're going to head straight out onto the road and the dirt as well, enjoy some lovely scenery and get a really good impression about the Benelli TRK 502X. Come along, enjoy the ride. All right, we have a 500cc parallel twin. We have a six speed transmission. We have about 5.7 inches of suspension travel front and rear. Front suspension is non-adjustable. Rear suspension has both adjustment for rebound and compression dampening, which is good if you've got a pillion passenger or a load. Some of the really cool features of this bike that a lot of the other ones don't have, it's got a rear rack already, so you can you need to buy a top box, of course, that doesn't come with it. That would be great if it did, but no. Um, what else we got? Oh yeah, we have got crash bars. They come standard. Really good screen, great screen. Comes right up to about halfway up your helmet. I'm six foot one tall and it's great for me. Cuts down a heap of the, the wind uh, off your chest and obviously off most of your helmet as well. Makes it for quite comfortable riding. Uh, hand guards both sides. All right, fuel tank. Holds about 20 litres. I have done some tests already. I've been getting around about 4.2 litres per 100 kilometres. And that is pretty much exactly what the manufacturers or the testers I've read have said that it would get. So that's spot on, which has been unusual for most motorcycle manufacturers and especially unusual for car manufacturers. But it does do what it, uh, it does get the economy that it says it will do and that would give it a potential range of, I believe, well over 400 kilometers, which is fantastic, guys. Now, the price, guys, this thing is an absolute bargain. It's right away for well under $10,000 Australian. Not sure whether it is in US dollars, but I will put it up on the screen when I work it out later. Now, super comfortable. The, the seat is pretty low. You sort of sit in the bike, which is great because it gives you a lot of protection from the wind, from the, the, the petrol tank. Well, that's actually a color and of course the the, uh, the front screen and the hand guards all help too. Now probably the biggest downside of the bike is the fact that it is only about uh, 48 horsepower, 50 horsepower which is really not a lot of power by today's standards but it's okay for you know a 500cc bike and the bike does weigh about 220 kilograms dry I believe and obviously more with a full tank of fuel and your gear and if you're carrying a pillion passenger as well. So that's a, a, a consideration if you are buying this bike or looking to buy this bike is if you are going to be carrying a lot of gear and a pillion passenger, um, is that going to be an issue for you, the, the, the uh, lower power? I find that myself, I weigh about 86 kilograms and it pulls me along quite nicely, but it is adequate and I've got used to it and it's quite mellow. The engine's note is beautiful. It's got a really lovely exhaust note. You really will enjoy that. And I haven't found the lack of power to be that much of an issue, really, for me, just riding on my own. If, as I said earlier, you had a pillion passenger, you were carrying a lot of gear, yeah, maybe it would be an issue. Um, overtaking vehicles on the highway, yeah, it's still as easy to overtake as you would be in a car that had a a reasonable size four-cylinder engine, I suppose. So that hasn't been an issue I've found. But it, having said that, uh, if it did have another five or 10 horsepower, that would be wonderful, but it hasn't. So uh, look, I'm quite comfortable the way it is. At 100 k's an hour, it cruises along quite nicely. Uh, it's very smooth and doesn't move around in the wind at all. You can have, I've, I've been out in some really strong headwinds on this bike uh, and sidewinds, sorry and doesn't move around hardly at all. You, you really don't notice it. And compared to some other bikes I've had, it is really good in that respect. 
Now moving on to handling. Handling on both dirt and road is quite uh, confidence inspiring. It corners really well, really stable. So the weight of the bike would be helping out with the cornering there, I'm sure. Uh, also, uh, the front and rear suspension balance is absolutely fantastic on this bike on the road. You, the lack of adjustment in the front suspension, it's not an issue. You don't even notice it, really. It is just uh, spot on, I find, as it is straight out of the box, so to speak. And the rear suspension is adjustable if you needed to put a bit of extra weight on the back. I haven't, honestly haven't touched either end because I haven't needed to. And uh, yeah, it's been fantastic as far as that goes. So um, yeah, a great all round bike. And one of the really cool features too is the, the lighting on the bike itself. At night, the whole dash just lights up beautiful, looks wonderful. And all the instruments have got little blue backlights behind them. And if I can, I'll put a little photo in and I'll show you what it looks like at night because it's, uh, it, is, it is quite, uh, quite stunning. Uh, speaking of lights, headlights are great. I've had no issue. I've ridden the bike at night a number of times and I found that it works quite well. Uh, definitely attracts a, a lot of bugs to the headlight, which is a good indication that it's working well. <laughs> so I end up with a, a mess on the headlight. Speaking of that, that's one of the good things about having a, a high screen. Obviously, obviously when you're riding at night in countries where insects are a bit of an issue, Asia perhaps, I'm here in Australia where, where I'm talking to you right now, and that is a problem in a lot of areas here. Tracks all the insects, and sooner or later, you're gonna get them smashing into your helmet visor to the point where you can't really see that well. And the headlights of oncoming vehicles are a real problem because it's just uh, breaking up the light all over your, your uh, visor and making it really difficult to see where you're going, which is not a real good thing on a motorbike at night. So there's a bonus for the Benelli there straight away. All right, guys, that's about it for now. Let's get it out in the road. We'll talk about it some more taking some lovely scenery, bit of dirt road, bit of bitumen road, and put it through its paces yeah, and see what it's like. Also, if you're new to this channel and you haven't already done so, please hit the like and subscribe button. Thanks guys, I'll see you out there. Good morning peoples, beautiful sunny here in central Victoria, Australia. Doing a bit of a triple test today. Got the Benelli TRK 502X, which I haven't done a video on as yet. Also we've got the filming today with the GoPro Hero 10 Black with the medium wide attached of course and lastly we've got the DJI Mini 3 Pro which I'm going to try and get a bit of footage of the the bike in the active track mode from ahead behind and off to the side as well so stay tuned it's gonna be a fun day hope you enjoy the video Anyway, today's plan consists of a little bit of varying terrain, a bit of bitumen, a bit of easy off-road and a little bit of harder off-road and some lovely scenery thrown in. That'll be our first destination where that tower is on the hill in the distance there. It's called Rose Hill telecommunications tower and probably the highest point in the immediate local area to this town. I'm just approaching the turn off to Rose Hill. It's only a, about 500 metres or so, probably less, but it's a very steep little climb so it'll test the Benelli's 500cc engine out. Pretty talky little bike this one though. So we'll do a little test here. I've got it in second now. I'll try third, see if it'll pull third all the way to the top. Now trust me, I've ridden my push bike up here and this is steep. Probably a lot steeper than it looks in the in the video, that's for sure. Okay, it's doing alright. This is not the steepest bit though. Still main I've got the throttle just sitting there, not moving. Okay, this is the steepest bit right here. Okay, we're struggling. Back to second. 
But this is tough. I can't even ride a push bike up this in low range first gear on my mountain bike. So a 200 kilo bike a plus bike is probably going to struggle. Yeah, for sure. All right, we'll just stop here. Have a quick little look around. Oh, it's a gorgeous day, isn't it? Absolutely lovely. Oops. I think I'll actually ride around. It's probably easier. There we go. That's our next destination over there guys, if you can see it in the distance there, that's called Mount Karong. And it is probably the highest point in this area for a long, long way I'd reckon. Pretty rocky here, more trail bike territory than adventure bike territory, well this one anyway. <laughs> I'm sure if you had a KTM uh, or something similar you'll wouldn't be too concerned but horses for courses isn't it you get what you pay for I'm not complaining this bike will go to a lot of places where a road bike won't and do it in comfort and ease so it's a good thing haven't seen any of our bouncy friends this morning yet we're gonna turn off onto a bit of dirt here We'll see uh, how this goes on this sort of terrain. Even in standard standard setup, the suspension is pretty good. It, it soaks up pretty much everything. It's it's really good. I mean, we're only I think it's this way. We're going the back way to that big mountain I showed you earlier, by the way. Just got to try and remember how to get there. Normally, don't bring this bike down here. I'll bring my enduro bike this way, but not this one. All right, back to the suspension I was talking about. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's, even though it's non-adjustable, there's really not a lot you'd want to do with it for the, the purpose of the bike. It's quite comfortable to cruise on, particularly on the, on the open road, it's just fine. And it will soak up a decent hit, like a pothole or like a deep rut. There's another one here that's... Yeah, look, it did the bottom out on that one. Now there's a couple of big ones here. I've just stood up for them, but I didn't really need to. Just nice to stretch the legs every now and again. Oops, water. All right, all good. Standard tyres that come with this bike, and I'm assuming they're probably the same all over the world, I'd, I would think. Uh, the Metzler two rants, which are probably more of a a road bias, excuse me, they're probably more of a road bias than a dirt bias. They're probably, if I had to put a percentage on, I would say probably 70% road, 30% dirt. But uh, having said that, I have taken this bike on some pretty gnarly tracks before where it's been quite slippery and haven't had too much of an issue with them at all. Obviously they're no knobby or trials tyre, never will be. But for the purpose of just a bit of light off-road with the occasional tough bit thrown in, excuse me, done it again, with the occasional tough bit thrown in, they're all right, they're fine. In fact, For the sort of work that this bike is aimed at, sort of market this bike is aimed at, that's probably the ideal tyre really. They're deep groove, basically they're a deep groove cross pattern road tyre. But uh, I've had no issues with them. I've not seen any damage from uh, rocky terrain or from bluestone or anything like that. So they've been pretty fine as far as that goes. And uh, I suppose the main thing is hunter protection. Now, I probably shouldn't have said that, should I? Anyway, touch wood, we don't get one today. I have got a repair kit with me. Now, here's a really tough, tough little section here. 
it's a series of washaways and can ride over this like flat out on the enduro bike but it's got uh, 300 mils of travel at front and rear but we'll just go over this and I'll, I'll stand up for it because it's probably a little bit too deep not to let's go over in second gear and we'll, we'll see how it goes did bottom out for sure, no doubt about that. The front, the back did, the front did. But it soaked it up nicely and at no time did I feel like I was going to lose control of the bike so that's all good. Oh there we go, there's our destination, we're getting closer. So I've picked the right track so far. Now the rest of the way over there is pretty easy dirt road. It's a renovator's delight for anybody who likes to flip houses. It's been a while since that one's been used I think. Yeah I'll pass. I don't know about you guys but I'll pass on that one. That's not looking too flash. I'm starting to make that derelict house back there look pretty good now. I think I'd rather that one. Karong fire brake track. Well, that's what we're going to do, but we're going to attack it from the other direction, which is not far away from here. It goes right around the base of the whole mountain. I think it's about four to five kilometres in length, but it's a good little challenge for the bike, I can assure you of that. A lot of rocks, sand, there'll be mud today for sure, and a bit of hard pack, a few washaways. Probably not something you'd normally take a bike like this on, but it'll sort of show you that it can handle it. Okay, a bit of a parking area here. The fireplace there if you want to come here for an evening and try and keep yourself warm. Bit of the start of the unofficial walking track to the top of the hill. Can't really see it at all from here, but if you go up around that little slope there, you can sort of see the, the start of it. I don't think it's officially sanctioned as a walking trail, but it's just the one that people do use if they want to go up there. Not a lot of people do it. It's not very well known this, this area. The ones that do go up there make the effort because it's not an easy climb but I tell you that now it's quite steep in places and, and rough and uh, a little bit of rock climbing nothing too serious but the view from the top is outstanding particularly on a day like today when it's so so clear and no I'm not walking up there today <laughs> I might take the uh, Mini 3 up there for a bit of a look, <laughs> but I'm not walking up there. We've had a bit of rain, so the 
tracks are pretty hard packed at the moment. This is what they call granite sand, a lot of this stuff here. And it can be quite slippery in the dry. It's not too bad today, I can sort of feel that the bike's not moving around much at all, really. But I will take it easy because it's definitely no off-road enduro weapon, this thing. Actually looks like it's been graded recently. Normally it's not this smooth, that's for sure. Yeah, it has. Oh, definitely, yeah. And they've also put in a, like a gutter on the side there too, I see. Stop the water running down the road. Oh, well. Good to see. Yeah, this is really, really smooth compared to what it was. Oh, the water running down the rock. I don't know if you can see it. All that. Yeah, this is a bit of a wet spot here. You can see where the water drains down off the hill. Here we go, you can see it up here. All the water coming off the big granite rocks there, sun shining off it. Yeah, this is quite boggy looking stuff. Wouldn't mind to get stuck in here. Yeah, it's a natural washway. Actually, I probably shouldn't have stopped. <laughs> That'll be a test for these tyres, see if we can you know, get started on a little upright. Uh, little upslope with a slippery surface. Here we go. Ah, oh, no worries, it's done it easy. Yep, definitely standing up for that bit. Stop here for a sec, have a look at the view. Wow. That's awesome, isn't it? Just gorgeous countryside. That big hill in the distance there, well, it's actually a mountain. We don't need much of an excuse to call something a mountain here in Australia. If it's anything over 100 metres or more, I think that gets a mountain nickname or designation or whatever you call it. But that over there in the distance is Mount Kuyura and that's Kuyura State Park. It's uh, sort of locally famous for Melville Kays, so called because of a bush ranger from back in the late 1800s I think it was, or mid 1800s, I'm not too sure. He used to use that as his hideout, he used to hide out in the caves up there on the hills and he could see the troopers coming from miles away so he had time to prepare or get away or whatever. But yeah, it's a, a lovely little spot, really beautiful area. We won't be doing that today but we will do that in a future video so stay tuned to the channel and if you haven't subscribed please do so, I would greatly appreciate it. Anyway, we shall move on. Enough talking, more riding. This bit's that steep, they've actually put concrete down over the rocks. But not all the ways you can see. Oh, thank God they've graded it. This used to be really bad. A lot of big ruts in it. Yeah, what I've come here at the right time, it looks like it's only just been done. I might run into the back of a grader soon, I better be careful. Although I'm not going much faster than the grader at 32 k's anyhow. <laughs> oh, Alright, this corner looks a bit tricky. Yeah, oh yeah, a bit of loose dirty, yeah, I better go a bit faster. Oh, oh jeez. Yep, just found a limit of the Metzler Turan's tyres there. That would have been a knobby. <laughs> Territory for sure. Ooh, ooh, a bit of off camber there. Not something you want to see on a 200 kilo plus bike. Okay, I got through that without too much difficulty. Didn't even have to get off the pegs. Oh wow, they've put in a bit of a solid gutter as well. Excellent. I've got a funny feeling I'm going to run into some workmen soon. Gee, this is loose here. Really loose. Yeah, I'm going to be, have to be very careful here. Oh yeah, like very squirrely in the front end. There's a, quite a big camber in the 
track too so there's not much room for error but at least if I come off it's going to be a soft landing hopefully this thing won't land on top of me <laughs> oh really jeez I'll go over here it's definitely a work in progress I think and uh, yeah, as I said there's uh, one of the work vehicles up ahead looks like you're having a smoke out in the middle of the track oh, I saw me coming didn't he it's a scraper blade it's done a wonderful job now when I said I wanted to test the Benelli out on a bit of varying terrain I wasn't sort of expecting this oh geez that was a that was a bit of a hairy bit six inches of really loose soil right on the corner well, sometimes momentum can be your friend Yeah, it's going to have to be careful here. This is really loose. Especially around this bend here. Cool, what's he done here? Okay, we'll just... Oh, he's hit a big tree root. That's another one there. Jeez, this gets any rougher. I'm going to have to stand up soon. Well, that's it. Back to the normal track, are we? Yeah, no. beast off the center stand. Should be easy actually downhill a little bit. Oh nearly. Oh got him. That's always good.
Well, hi again, guys. I'm uh, actually on voiceover at the moment. Unfortunately, uh, my media mod had some difficulties. It Its audio was dropping in and out regularly, and I think it's been since fixed with a, a software update because I haven't had that issue again. But unfortunately, the final pieces of the footage that I've got for today's video will have to be a voiceover, which is okay, so it'll give you time to sort of sit back and just take in the scenery and and uh, enjoy the ride with me. Anyway, we'll talk about the, the bike on, on the way. Yeah, I'll give my thoughts and summary and a bit of a, an overview of all the different points that I've covered through from the start of the video up until now. But first of all, the main thing I I would imagine is the fact that it's price, it's right away price. Uh, as I stated earlier, it was under 10,000, but I've actually since corrected that. But price rises, it's now over $10,000, 10,390, I think I saw it listed on bikesales.com here in Australia. So I would assume that it's similar prices all over the world. And look, that still represents fantastic value for money. And you tell me another adventure bike out there that can do everything this one can do at the same price point with all the extras and all the comfort uh, it's, it's a pretty hard it's a pretty hard bike to beat as far as value goes i would think um, as mentioned earlier the the biggest probably drawback if you want to call it that some people won't be bothered with it at all is the the, the power now i don't know if you guys are aware but there is an actual trk 800 that is not rumoured anymore, it is actually in existence and it will be released to the, the marketplace within the next few months, I believe. As you can see, this was released in around about the end of July, so I would expect we'll see that within the next couple of months. Now, being an 800cc motorcycle, I would assume that it's going to have probably at least another 20 horsepower, maybe more, and it's probably going to be uh, aimed at competing with the uh, the new CF Moto, which is uh, a similar type uh, of motorcycle, which is a, a Chinese-built uh, copy of the European designs. So, yeah, that'll be interesting to see how that stacks up against this, particularly at the price point. Now, that could be the major sticking point there. I mean, are we willing to pay an extra $3,000 or so, which is about what the CF Moto is, I think, actually, no, I think the CF Moto is about 15,000, but I'll, uh, I'll look that one up and let you know. But uh, yeah, so we've still got a $10,300 bike, an extra 20 or 30 horsepower. Is that going to be worth another $3,000? Yeah, I don't know. I don't think so. Personally, uh, it'd be nice to have, but sooner or later, I think someone will make some aftermarket par parts for this bike, probably an exhaust or perhaps uh, an engine management chip it will boost the power up just that bit more to make it a little bit more enjoyable. Anyway, let's talk about what it did today and what it uh, what it's capable of. First of all, as you can probably see from the different terrain we took it on, it steers really well. It steers obediently, responds predictably, and the brakes are pretty good. I didn't actually talk about the brakes. The front brake is does require a little bit of a heavy lever pull and not too bad just a little bit more than you're probably used to with most uh, most bikes but it's still pretty good um, both ends have ABS brakes so and they work even well on the dirt on the granite sand that I rode around Mount Karong there that is quite slippery in places and it, it really does work well there um, I've always also talked about the comfortable the, the seating position and the comfort of the bike it's, it's good whether you're seated or whether you're standard, I find. And look, it's just a solid, well-rounded motorcycle. It's great on the highway, it's great on the dirt. And at the price point, as I mentioned earlier, it's well within reach of just about anybody's budget if you're looking for a new motorcycle. Another thing too is that uh, Chinese-made motorcycles like this one, even though they're borrowing heavily on the Italian influence, influence with the Benelli name, of course, and the styling, which is very much uh, a Ducati type quality, even down to the red colour. Although I must admit, you can buy these in other colours, white, blue, and um, black, I think. I'm not too sure. 
but yeah, it's, it is definitely a, an attempt to uh, draw on the uh, on, on the fame of the the Ducatis and other Italian motorcycles. I'm sure. I've had a lot of people already ask me about this bike. The two main questions I get asked are: A, is it reliable, and how much do parts cost? Well. Yes, it's reliable. I have not had one single issue with this bike at all. Nothing. And nothing has come loose. Nothing has cracked. Nothing has broken. Uh, nothing has stopped working. It runs flawlessly. Uh, I cannot complain in any way about that. So that's a big tick there straight away. And the other one I think was uh, spare parts price. Well, yeah, it's going to be it's Chinese origin. So they're going to be cheap. They're going to be a lot cheaper than, than the... Uh, European manufacturers, I would imagine. I haven't checked that, but I'm pretty sure that that's a no-brainer, that that would be true. You will always come across people that will hate this bike. They are the motorcycle purists and snobs, if I, if I want of a better term. And let, look, let them poo-par this bike. Let them go and buy their 20, 30, $40,000 European machines or whatever. And yeah, like that's that's fine if they want to do that and they want to spend that extra money, that's great. But for a lot of people, the vast majority of people, a bike is a secondary uh, vehicle for us. It's uh, often just a, a machine we use for fun on weekends and the occasional occasional ride. It's not something that we want to have twenty, thirty thousand dollars tied up with sitting in the garage for for months on end. And most people can't afford that. And that's and that's where a bike like this really comes into its own. You can actually leave it sitting in the garage and not, you're not worried about massive devaluation. You're not worried that you paid, say, $34,000 for this 1300, 1800cc uh, adventure bike that you know in two years' time, three years' time, it's going to be worth probably near half that. And it's just not an issue. So there's another bonus for this type of bike is that you will keep it and you will use it and that's at the end of the day that's what it's all about is enjoyment and not stressing over having too much money tied up in 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 what essentially is uh, a pleasure machine for most of us so in final summary guys the trk 502x it looks good it goes reasonably well it's fantastic on fuel it's super comfortable it handles well both on and off road as you've seen in this video it's an amazingly comfortable touring bike that just eats up the miles or kilometers as we call them here suspension balance front and rear is superb straight out of the box and finally it's just plain fun to ride and to me that's what it's all about and that's the most important thing all right guys that's it for today i really hoped you enjoyed this video sorry about the length of it, it did get a bit uh, longer than i ex anticipated it was going to be but there you go anyway if you did like this video and i hope you did please hit the like and subscribe button and i hope to see you next time take care thanks for watching